All right, so I figured I'd better take a time real quick and uh, talk to you guys about engine combinations and uh, what are the pros and cons and uh, different types of engines that you can build for what you want to do. And I'm going to teach you guys how to figure out what engine you want and that's going to be up to you to figure this out so um, you know I have favorite engine combinations for me but um, for everybody they're all different um, and you know it depends on what you want to build and I don't you know I don't build many engines anymore I just sometimes I take one apart and I go man the parts were all new like in the in the bus over there the parts I had were all new that were in it so I was like hey you know new parts are expensive so when it's got all new parts in it I'm gonna stay with what's there um, so I want to talk to you guys real quick about if you're gonna build an engine uh, things to think about and things to keep in mind when you're building it um, you know it, it, there's a whole bunch of different guys with you know if you want to go fast super fast then I'm not the guy to talk to about that there's other guys that can talk more about that stuff, but I'll give you the ideas so that you can design your own. Okay, there's a few different types of things to talk about. There's an undersquare engine and an oversquare engine, uh, and then there's things like the length of your intake runners, the length of your exhaust, um, how they affect your torque and horsepower. So. A lot of people don't know this right here. It does so many guys that build engines, VW engines, and they don't know this stuff I'm telling you right now. So, okay, the longer the intake, the longer the intake. So if you have dual carbs with little short intakes, the longer it's, that's, that's a short intake, a longer intake is the long one that goes all the way over here. The longer the intake, the more the torque that you create with your engine. The shorter the exhaust, the more the torque. The longer the exhaust, the less the torque, more horsepower. That's from, if you look up old racing stuff, it'll, it talks about having an engine in the middle, like right here, and then you move it this way, and you, know, you have a, a shorter intake and a longer exhaust, and then it goes this way, short exhaust longer intake and how that creates more torque in your uh, spectrum so if you guys want to build an engine for a bus um, typically putting dual carbs on it will take away from the torque is that going to help you get where you want to go maybe not um, but you can make up for having more torque doing other things like bore and stroke okay there's something called an oversquare engine. An oversquare engine, I believe it's this way. I can't remember if it's this way or the opposite, but I'm going to give you the. Um, yeah, it's oversquare. Oversquare is a large bore, a large bore on your pistons, and a short stroke. So if you want a high revving, high horsepower engine with no torque, then you make get the biggest jugs you can have the smallest crankshaft. In other words, you run your 69 millimeter crankshaft, and you run, you know, 94 cylinders. That's going to give you a high revving engine with no bottom end. Now, anytime you add more inches or cubic centimeters (cc's) to your engine, that's going to give you more torque too. So. You get a little bit more torque, but the engine is not designed for more torque when you do it to a 1914. So I'm not really a 1914 kind of guy. I'd rather say I'm like more of a 90 and a half, which is a thick cylinder. Why would I run 90 and a half when I can run 94s? Um, yeah, because you're, when you open up your cylinder so far, you're getting really close to those studs on your uh on your for your for your heads and you're taking away a lot of that it's getting really thin 
down to that point where um, you could create uh, problems by having such a large cylinder. So I like to stick to the 90 and a half openings, um, which they can you can run a 91s or 92s. I think 92s with the 90 and a half opening, but then you have a really thin wall cylinder, so then it runs hot. So I like the 90.5s, and then what I like to do is go with a larger stroke crankshaft. So um, I'll go to like a, uh, I like the smaller ones that you don't have to open up the case and all that stuff with like a 90. You have to do a little bit with a, with a 90, a 76. So uh, I like 76. 74 is kind of a weird one that uh, if you have a 74 with a 90, 90, uh, 90 halves, you, it's like you, you kind of need to be an A cylinder, not a B or something like that. And it just doesn't work out that great. So anyway, but it can be done if you want to do 90, uh, 74. So anyway, so the shorter the stroke, the higher the revving. I mean, it's just simple. If you, the higher the revving, the larger the stroke, the more the torque you create. So if you want a really torquey engine, you try and make a longer stroke. Uh, with a smaller bore um, that makes you more towards so if you had a 69 millimeter crankshaft and a 69 millimeter bore that would be a a, uh, a square engine VWs aren't square but they're over square so um, if you want to really be torquey you would want like a like a really big stroke like an 86 millimeter stroke and a and a, maybe a 70 millimeter piston. They don't make that for VWs, but I'm just trying to give you the idea. That would give you super, super torquey. Wouldn't have a lot of power, wouldn't have a lot of top end, wouldn't rev very high, but man, it would be the torque, uh, cruise the mountain roads, no problem. So uh, that's, if you think about these things and you keep this stuff in mind, when you're thinking about the VW engineers and how they design these cars and how they made them, they ha had this all figured out. Um, with and then they matched that stuff to the gear ratios and then matched it to the tire sizes and made sure that everything you know they were going to get the most out of that engine. That's why uh, VW will run with a 25 horsepower engine in the early ones because it was super super torquey and like these little pea shooter exhausts. I mean, I noticed going, I had a, a 40 horse with a uh with a quiet pack like this here quiet pack muffler and it gave it more top end but it lost some on the torque side so I, I think it actually runs better with these pea shooters on here than I did with the with the other exhaust because I have more torque especially with the large bore cylinders so <clears throat> these are all the things that you can think of in your your when you're designing your engine um, so like, you know, I got I guys go, oh man, I'm going to go with the 1914 because, you know, it's easy. You just pop the cylinders and go with a 69 millimeter crank. Well, I'm going to ask you something. Are you going to go counterweighted? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm going to go counterweighted. Well, why don't you just go to a 76? Uh, well, then I go stroker, then I go B pistons and I got to go, you know, you know, hey, listen, why don't you go 90 and a half and go 76? You know, it's like, oh. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, are you going to be, what are you trying to do with the engine? Are you going to go super fast, go racing? Or are you, if you're going to do that, well, I'll just go 23-32. I mean, blow it up, man. You know, <laughs> are, are you going to, you know, are you just looking to pull a lot of weight? You know, oh, do I need dual carbs? You know, that's the other thing you know, guys go, oh, yeah, I got to put dual carbs on. Well, do you? <laughs> do you really need dual carbs? I've run nothing more than a two barrel for years and I beat guys with dual carbs racing. So, you know, people go, Oh, how could you do that? Well, uh, okay. With a Holly Weber, I'm going to tell you this stuff. So you guys know with a Holly Weber two barrel and the one that nobody everybody says doesn't work. Um, if you get them tuned just right, they will work very well. Okay. But not with this one here. I don't have one Holly Weber on this car, on this motor. I have one in my, in my shed over here. But I'm not going to go out there right now. It's too dark. So, um, with a Holly Weber two barrel, 
what do you have that you don't have with dual carbs? When I just told you what I told you about torque. You have a longer intake runner. So now I built more torque into my engine. So if I can work that torque and get more out of it, um, then I can get. Do you have something that the other guy doesn't have? I mean, that's why the guys back in the old days used to run these big, long tunnel ram intake manifolds. That was to get more torque. That got you that off-the-line power. So I'm just trying to give you guys your, your, your heads up. It, it, you don't have to do what everybody else does. You want to do what you want to do, what you're trying to do. If you're trying to make your engine pull a lot of weight, then do something to give it more torque. Um, if you're trying to get it to uh, run cool, then do something to make it run cool, lower the compression. You know, if you're, you know, there's so many different things, combinations that you can do um, that, you know, you can make the engine the way you want it to be. So that, that's just what I'm trying to explain. Um, I, I used to have, you know, if you had a, a, a you know, so, so let's say you had a, a two barrel, okay? What I was going to say to show you about the two barrel, okay? A set of Caterons are, I think they're, what are they, uh, 36 CFM? Or are they even that much? I think they're only 30 CFM. So that's 60 CFM for two carburetors. I think they're only 30s. 36s are, no, maybe they're 36s. I can't remember. Um, the, uh, the, the two barrel, the Holly Weber two barrel is a 28 front and a 32 back. So that gives you 60 CFM. So um, pretty much you're about the same place you were with the Cadrons. So now you've eliminated having to uh, do the adjustments in your carbs, having the popping and all that crap and jetting issues. Um, now you've got it down to one carburetor. You've got more torque. So, you know, that worked really well for me. And that's why I was able to, you know, have a pretty quick car. So I'm not looking to be a race car I'm not looking to win any races if I was looking to do that I would go with 48 uh, carbs or I just screw that go right for the turbo I'm not gonna mess around with with carburation if I'm gonna go fast I'm gonna go right up to the turbo or turbocharger I'm not gonna mess with anything else so anyway um, we got can't be afraid of them <laughs> a lot of guys are because when you do tur when you're talking about turbo now you're talking about it's like putting a magnifying on your jetting Take a magnifying glass and putting it on your jetting. Because whatever you have in your jetting, if it's just a little tiny bit off, there's 10 times as much air going, 20, 15 times, 20 times as much air going through that carburetor. And it's, you know, if it's just a hair off, it just, you know, you, you get detonation and you blow the motor up. So, but that's why a lot of guys are afraid of it. So, um, but anyway, the, the thing that I'm telling you guys about is, is, Read about this stuff. Look at the the carburetor sizes. Look at the intake. Keep the stuff I'm telling you in mind um, about torque, you know, distance, the length of the exhaust, the shortness or longer length of the exhaust, longer exhaust, can you get more top end, um, all that stuff that you can do to make your car, um, you know, do what you want it to do. And do be your own engineer a little bit and play with it and make the thing work. All right, so that might help you guys figure out what you really want to do when you build your engine. All right, talk to you in the next video.